Hey guys, what's going on? It's Coach BJ here. I'm doing another segment of Behind the Scenes. Before you do anything, hit like, hit subscribe. It really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for that. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about rate of force development today, what it means for strength and conditioning, what it means on the bike, how to interpret it, how to find it, specifically on the bike and for sprinting or for accelerations. If you have been on the notorious, the infamous track sprinting Facebook group, um, you'll see this term thrown around, you know, coaches, I'm guilty of throwing around terms and then, you know, not explaining to people what they mean, try and be better about that. But um, you'll see people chime in and say, work on your RFD, train your RFD without any explanation. A lot of those people also don't really know what that means. So we're going to talk about rate of force development, what it means practically for you on the bike and how to interpret it. As per usual, I have this spreadsheet calculator that I use for myself, like when I'm coaching athletes and I analyze their stuff on it. I also um, am going to have it available for you to download in the comments below. So check that out. Let's start off talking about where this concept comes from and, you know, its origins in strength and conditioning. So the gold standard for measuring RFD is with the force plate, very expensive piece of equipment um, that I've had the great um, privilege of being able to work with on a limited basic basis because it's an expensive piece of equipment, but it's a great tool and it measures to the millisecond. So you get a, th a thousandth of a second, a thousand milliseconds in a second. So you get really, really small sampling window for how much force is being produced. And think of it just like a body weight scale. You step on it, it tells you how heavy you are. If you were to jump on it, you're going to exert more force. So the scale would essentially read more pounds. Um, you're going to be exerting more force on that scale. So there will be periods of time where the scale reads heavier. And then as you jump, the scale will become, you know, there'll be no force on the scale. So that's what a force plate does is it measures every millisecond how much force is being exerted. Um, and you can get a rate of force development profile. So how quickly you generate force and what that force is. So that's where it comes from. How do we use it on the bike? Luckily, power meters are force measuring devices. Right? They take your forces and they know how fast it's happening because it's on the bike, RPMs, um, and it figures out what the power is or what the work is. If you, ha if you don't understand what power or work is, there's another calculator and there's another video for that. You can look at body weight for max watts. That's up on the YouTube channel and it explains kind of what wattage is, what power and work is. But we'll put that aside for now. Your power meter will tell you it knows how forceful you are. It knows how quick you went and it'll give you power. So we're going to use this power meter to give us some insight into how quickly we generate force, just like on the force plate. Power meters, unfortunately, are not going to give you a sampling of every millisecond. It's going to give you one hertz or every second. Um, that's a typical sampling window. The SRMs, the PC5 head unit will, the PC7 head unit will sample at every half second, which is a huge advantage to someone that wants to get more data. It still pales in comparison to every millisecond. So, you know, we work with what we've got. So let's take a look at how to use this calculator, how to use a copy and paste the watts starting at the beginning of the effort, enter a starting zero if applicable. So let's take a look at, I'm going to pull up a image here of a workout. Cool. You can ignore that little orange zero at the beginning. I'm adding that for effect that we'll get to in a second, but we'll see how this effort starts at 1500 watts. Of course, you have to accelerate up to 1500 watts. Um, I'll do a video on different types of sprint efforts and why this power went from zero to 1500. So I'm going to go from no power on that power meter to 1524 watts. In reality, there are plenty of milliseconds of me exerting increasing force. My power meter just isn't sensitive enough for that. It's not giving us every millisecond. It's giving us every second. That's a long time for power to be built. Um, so we can assume that there's a nice 
steep curve, similar to the drop off between the end here, 1421 and 126 watts. That steep drop off, it's gonna be a very similar build on this acceleration. So we just have to infer that it's there happening within that second that didn't get picked up. We just get the result at the end of that once for a second. So all of this is just to demonstrate that there will be some efforts that seem to come out of nowhere. There is no buildup. They just start really high because that's the nature of the effort. In that scenario, we're going to enter a zero. That's enter a starting zero if applicable. So let's come over here. Let's put paste this data. This is actually just my data right here all the way to the 126. Let's just copy and paste this over. All right. So this is assuming that it took me four seconds to get up to a peak of 184. It's calculated to automatically give you that. This is where we run into trouble. The effort didn't start at 1500. It actually started, let's undo that, at zero. So I enter zero as my starting effort, and then I continue to paste in the rest of the data. That's why this is important, because it took a second for me to go from unloaded up to 1525. We just don't have the evidence of that because the power meter was not sensitive enough to pick up what happened in the middle of the second. So this is our effort. I'm going to add on a little bit more, a couple zeros like we did uh, and some more data as if we did two efforts, right? So I sprint these couple zeros, couple seconds of me coasting, and then I sprint again, right? A double sprint. Let's put that in there. And you'll notice the way I set up this calculator is it automatically detects the watts, the peak, and it'll tell you how many seconds it took you to get there. Um, 1844 watts is our peak. If I were to put a peak down here, let's put 1900 down here. There we go. It'll show me that time to peak was 18 seconds. That's outside of our range. You'll see this error message. Peak is more than 10 seconds. So let's put our peak. Let's just make that zero. Let's put our peak somewhere within 10 seconds. So let's put a 1900 here. Mess this data all up. There we go. So now it's reading peak is 1900 watts. Time to peak is eight seconds. It's gonna automatically detect that for you. So if the power goes, it peaks, comes down and comes back up again, it'll find the proper peak. Here's the caveat. If you have two peaks and your highest power is in the second peak, this is not a good effort to judge rate of force development. You want this to be a aggressive, full maximum effort data set with one solid peak that builds up all the way. If you gra if you pace yourself, if you gradually build up to full speed, that is not rate. There is a rate of force development, but it's not a reflection of your capacity or your ability to produce force at a quick rate. So these are max efforts. We're thinking standing starts. We're talking accelerations, drop down accelerations, rate of force production, maximum sprint efforts. Okay. So just to get that out of the way, let's delete this 1900. There we go. Our peak is at 1844, five seconds in. If you forget to put the zero or you happen to put things not up at the top, let's say you're not starting at the beginning, it'll say input error. So make sure you start your data right up under that Watts line. Pretty simple. Enter your interval. So I was using a Garmin, which was sampling every one sec, actually a Wahoo sampling every one second. If I had my PC seven on, I could have sampled every half second. So I could put in 0.5. That's going to change how many seconds it took because now each of these is half a second instead of one second of data. So it'll change the seconds and it'll, you know, repopulate the chart. However, I did do these at one second. If you put in something other than one second, it'll say error set time interval to 0.5 or one. I've built in those fail safes because sometimes you make a mistake and you don't realize it. Uh, rate to peak. We start with peak 1844. We know that it's five seconds in. So Already we have some criteria for how good the effort is or how good the athlete is at producing force quickly. How long does it take them to get to peak? That might depend on the terrain. Is it flat road? Is it uphill? Is it downhill? That might depend on the gear. Was it a big gear to get on top of? So forth. So we'll get there in a second, but five seconds, right? Shorter is better. The shorter you can get up to power, the better. So it took me five seconds to get to peak. I generated 368.8 watts per second over that five seconds to peak. Um, so these are two metrics that you can really measure 
is the rate higher or lower? Were the seconds more or less, right? Did it take me longer to get to peak, shorter to get to peak? Were the watts per second higher or lower? We're looking for short time to peak, which will result in a higher rate to peak, a higher watt per second. All right, so this is great. Out of context, it doesn't mean much. Take a look at this RFD gear comparison chart over here. This is current gear. So this is referring to what we're doing on the screen right now. Um, it'll say current gear unless I enter a gear inch over here. Enter gear inch. So let's just put in 115. 115 inches. When I do that, it'll change my gear inch to 115 over here. And it'll say 5 seconds to peak. 368.8 watts per second. Now I'm comparing these to other rates or other rfds time to peaks and rate of force developments at 100 gear inch 95 90 85 and let's talk about how we're going to do that so let's switch tabs here rfd comparison uh we're going to look up here enter watts enter recording interval just the same as before and then enter the gear inch if you don't know the gear inch use the gear inch converter if necessary okay so let's take a look at this gear inch calculator enter the chain ring teeth enter cassette teeth. This is also going to be enter your cog. Um, if you're on a track bike, a single sprocket, same thing, cassette, sprocket, whatever tooth you're on in the back, we put that in here. Let's just make that 14. Great. This is rounded. So this should be probably 96 point something, but I rounded it just to make it easy. 50 in the front, 14 in the back. It's going to give you 96 gear inches. So you can use this as a little cheat sheet for yourself when you're entering these, if you don't know. And you put your gear inch up here. Let's make this 120. Let's make this 55. That's a very, very low number. I don't know why I did that. But 92 and 150, which is pretty big. Okay, I just made these up just so that we can see. Here's some data in here. I just put in a couple different data points to make these a little bit different. They'll all individually calculate watts, seconds, watts per second, peaks. Uh, we don't need to really look at this page so much. We come back. It populates itself on our main sheet, which should make it easy to look at. Um, your very top one will always be the one that's on this page. All the comparisons are the ones that are on this page. So if you want to compare some of your past efforts, some of your best efforts in other gears, big gears, small gears, this is a great way to do it. We can look at here based on this fake data that we have um, the highest watts the highest rate of force development was at 55 gear inches um but three seconds to peak and it was 589 watts per second um and the way we got there was because we peaked out at 1700 watts or basically 1750 in three seconds so we got there a lot faster okay so that's it just a quick run through you enter your watts, make sure you enter a zero if there's not already a, a number down there that's like 20 or even 100. You know, start with something 100 or less, put it in there. Um, make sure that your watts are entered all the way up to the line, to this green line, and there's not a space because it will say error. Um, enter your gear inch in here just so that you can keep track of what it was. Enter your interval. You want to know, are you recording in half seconds or one second? That will change the watts per second because we need to know, are we recording half seconds or seconds? Um, I'm leaving it on one. So when you download it, it should automatically be on one, which is what most people will be using. Um, you can look at peaks, seconds to peak, and the rate of force development. It'll all be on this chart for you. And you can do your comparisons by putting them in here. Make sure to label in the blues what your gear inches are so that when you come back, you can see how they compare. The gear will make a difference. 120 inch gear is going to accelerate slower than a 55 inch gear. So you probably will have a higher rate of force development on the 55 than on the 120. Um, you would have a higher rate of torque development on the 120 than the 55, but that's a topic for another video. All right, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments, hit me up, send me a DM. If you guys are looking for coaching, I'm a full-time sports performance, cycling, strength and conditioning coach. You know where to find me. I'm here to help and I'm here to make you fast. As per usual, make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, get smart, be strong, go fast.
Wow. <laughs>